Reading from the 24 Hours of the Passion by Louisa Picaretta. Preparation for each hour. O oh, my Lord Jesus Christ, prostrate in your divine presence, I implore your most loving heart to admit me to the sorrowful meditation of the 24 hours in which for love of us, you wanted to suffer so much in your adorable body and in your most holy soul unto death on the cross. Oh, please give me help, grace, love, deep compassion, and understanding of your sufferings as I now meditate this hour. And for those which I cannot meditate, I offer you my will to meditate them and I willingly intend to meditate them in all the hours in which I have to apply myself to my duties or sleep. Accept, O merciful Lord, my loving intention and let it be beneficial for me and for all as if I effectively and in a saintly way accomplished what I wish to practice. Meanwhile, I give you thanks, O my Jesus, for calling me to union with you by means of prayer. And to please you more, I take your thoughts, your tongue, your heart, and with this I intend to pray, using all of myself in your will and in your love. And stretching out my arms to hug you, I place my head on your heart and I begin. Sixth hour, from 10 to 11 p.m. The second hour of agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, my sweet Jesus, one hour has already passed since you came to this garden. Love took primacy over everything, making you suffer all at once everything which the executioners will make you suffer through the whole course of your most bitter passion. Even more, love compensates for it and reaches the point of making you suffer what they cannot do to you in the most interior parts of your divine person. Oh, my Jesus, I see you now staggering in your steps, yet you want to walk. Tell me, oh my good, where do you want to go? Ah, I understand. To see your beloved disciples. I too want to accompany you so that if you stagger, I may sustain you. But oh my Jesus, another bitterness for your heart. They are already sleeping. And you, always compassionate, call them, wake them up and with love all fraternal, admonish them and recommend them to vigil and prayer. And then you return to the garden, but you carry yet another wound in your heart. And in that wound, I see, oh my love, all the piercings of the consecrated souls, who because of temptation, mood, or lack of motivation, instead of clinging to you, keeping vigil and praying, abandon themselves to themselves. And sleepy, instead of making progress in love and in union with you, draw back. How much compassion I feel for you, O oh passionate lover. And I repair you for all the ingratitudes of your most faithful ones. These are the offenses which most sadden your adorable heart, and their bitterness is such that they make you become delirious. But, oh, love without boundaries, your love is, which is already boiling in your veins, conquers all and forgets everything. I see you prostrate to the ground as you pray, offer yourself, repair, and in everything try to glorify the Father for the offenses given to him by creatures. I too, O oh my Jesus, 
prostrate myself with you. And with you, I intend to do what you do. But, oh Jesus, delight of my heart, I see that crowds upon crowds, all sins, our miseries, our weaknesses, the most enormous crimes, the gravest ingratitudes, advance toward you, assail you, crush you, wound you, bite you. And you, what do you do? The blood which boils in your veins comes to face all these offenses, bursts the veins open and pours out in large torrents. It makes you all wet. It flows to the ground and you give blood for offenses, life for death. Ah, love, to what a state I see you reduced. You are about to breathe your last. Oh, my good, my sweet love, please do not die. Raise your face from this ground which you wet with your most holy blood. Come into my arms. Let me die in your place. Raise your face. But I hear the trembling and dying voice of my sweet Jesus, which says, Father, if it is possible, let this chalice pass from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. It is the second time I hear this from my sweet Jesus. But what do you make me understand from this? Father, if it is possible, make this chalice pass from me. Oh, Jesus, all the rebellions of creatures advance toward you. And you see that fia voluntus tua, that your will be done, which was to be the life of each creature being rejected by almost all of them. And instead of finding life, they find death. And wanting to give life to all and make a solemn reparation to the Father for the rebellions of creatures, as many as three times you repeat, Father, if it is possible, let this chalice pass from me, that souls withdrawing from our will become lost. This chalice is very bitter for me. However, not my will, but yours be done. And while you say this, your bitterness is so intense and so great that you reach the extreme. You agonize and are about to breathe your last. Oh, my Jesus, my good, since you are in my arms, I too want to unite myself to you. I want to repair and compassionate you for all the faults and the sins committed against your most holy will. And also pray to you that I may always do your most holy will. May your will be my breath, my air. May your will be my heartbeat, my heart, my thought, my life, and my death. But please do not die. Where shall I go without you? To whom shall I turn? Who will give me help? Everything would be end for me. Oh, please do not leave me. Keep me as you want, as you please. Best please, but keep me with you, always with you. And may it never happen that I be separated from you, even for one instant. Rather, let me soothe you, repair you, compassionate you for all, as I see that all sins of every kind weigh upon you. Therefore, my love, I kiss your most holy head. But what do I see? All the evil thoughts, and you feel disgust for them. For your most sacred head, each evil thought is a thorn which pricks you bitterly. Ah, the crown of thorns which the Jews will place upon you cannot be compared with these. How many crowns of thorns the evil thoughts of creatures place upon your adorable head, 
to the point that your blood drips everywhere from your forehead and from your hair. Jesus, I compassionate you and would like to place upon you as many crowns of glory in order to soothe you. I offer you all the angelic intelligences and your own intelligence to give you an act of compassion and of reparation for all. Oh, Jesus, I kiss your pitying eyes. In them I see all the evil gazes of creatures which makes tears and blood flow over your face. I compassionate you. And I would like to soothe your sight by placing before you all the pleasures that can be found in heaven and on earth through union of love with you. Oh, Jesus, my good, I kiss your most holy ears. But what do I hear? I hear in them the echo of horrendous blasphemies, of shouts of revenge, of malicious gossip. There is not one voice which does not resound in your most chaste hearing. Oh, insatiable love, I compassionate you, and I want to console you by making resound in it all the harmonies of heaven, the most sweet voice of dear mama, the ardent accents of Magdalene, and of all the loving souls. Jesus, my love, my life, I want to impress a most fervent kiss on your face, whose beauty has no equal. Ah, this is the face on which the angels, like Cupid's, desire to fix for the great beauty that enraptures them. Yet the creatures dirty it with spit, beat it with slaps, and trample it underfoot. My love, what daring! I would like to shout so loudly as to put them to flight. I compassionate you. And in order to repair for these insults, I go to the most holy trinity to ask for the kiss of the Father and the Holy Spirit and the divine caresses of their creative hands. I also go to the celestial mama that she may give me her kisses, the caresses of her maternal hands, her profound adorations. And I offer you everything prepare for the offenses given to your most holy face. My sweet good, I kiss your most holy mouth, embittered by horrible blasphemies, by the nausea of drunkenness and gluttony, by obscene discourses, by prayers done badly, by evil teachings, and by all the evil that man does with his tongue. Jesus, I compassionate you and want to sweeten your mouth by offering you all the angelic praises and good use of the tongue made by many holy Christians. My oppressed love, I kiss your neck and I see it loaded down with ropes and chains because of the attachments and sins of creatures. I compassionate you. And in order to relieve you, I offer you the indissoluble union of the divine persons. And fusing myself in this union, I extend my arms to you, forming a sweet chain of love around your neck. I want to remove the ropes of the attachments which almost suffocate you. And to console you, I press you tightly to my heart, divine fortress. I kiss your most holy shoulders. I see them lacerated and your flesh almost torn to bits by the scandals and evil examples of creatures. I compassionate you, and in order to relieve you, I offer you the most holy examples, the examples of the Queen Mama and those of all the saints. And I, O oh my Jesus, Letting my kisses flow over each of these wounds want to enclose in them the souls who by force of scandals have been snatched from your heart 
and so rejoin the flesh of your most holy humanity. My labored Jesus, I kiss your breast, which I see wounded by coldness, lukewarmness, lack of correspondence, and the ingratitudes of creatures. I compassionate you, and in order to relieve you, I offer you the reciprocal love of the Father and of the Holy Spirit, the perfect correspondence of the three divine persons. And plunging into your love, O oh my Jesus, I want to shelter you in order to reject the new blows that creatures throw at you with their sins. And taking your love, I want to wound them with it that they never again dare to offend you. And I want to pour it upon your breast to soothe and heal you. My Jesus, I kiss your creative hands. I see all the evil actions of creatures, which, like many nails, pierce your most holy hands. And therefore, you remain pierced, not with three nails as on the cross, but with as many nails for as many evil works as these creatures commit. I compassionate you, and to give you relief, I offer you all the holy works the courage of martyrs in giving their blood and life for love of you. In sum, O oh my Jesus, I would like to offer you all the good works in order to remove from you the many nails of the evil works. O oh Jesus, I kiss your most holy feet, always untiring in searching for souls, in them you enclose all the steps of creatures, but you feel many of them run away, and you would want to stop them. At each of their evil steps, you feel a nail being driven into you, and you want to use their very nails in order to nail them to your love and the pain you feel. And the effort you make in order to nail them to your love is so intense and so great that you tremble all over. My God and my good, I compassionate you, and in order to console you, I offer you the steps of the good religious and all the faithful souls who expose their lives in order to save souls. Oh, Jesus, I kiss your heart. You continue to agonize not for what the Jews will make you suffer, but for the pains which all the offenses of creatures cause you. In these hours, you want to give primacy to love and second place to all sins, for which you expiate, repair, glorify the Father, and placate divine justice, and a third to the Jews. In this way, you show that the passion which the Jews will make you suffer is nothing but the representation of the double, most bitter passion which love and sin make you suffer. And this is why, concentrated in your love and in your heart, the lance of love and the lance of sin, you wait for the third one, the lance of the Jews. Your heart suffocated by love, suffers violent movements, impatient brushes of love, desires which consume you, and burning heartbeats which want to give life to every heart. And it is exactly here in your heart that you feel all the pain that creatures cause you, who with their evil desires, disordered affections, profaned heartbeats, instead of wanting your love, look for other loves. Jesus, how much you suffer. I see you faint, submerged by the waves of our iniquity, and I compassionate you. And I want to soothe the bitterness of your heart, pierced three times by offering you the eternal sweetnesses 
and the most sweet love of dear Mama Mary, as well as those of all your true lovers. And now, O oh my Jesus, let my poor heart draw life from your heart, that I may live with only your heart. And in each offense you will receive, let me be ever ready to offer you a relief, a comfort, a reparation, an act of love never interrupted. <laughs>